Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. Hello, podcasters. Hello. Hello. How out there? Oh, this looks really good. You mm-hmm. can't see what I'm looking at right uh, now on the TV. Like yeah. um, it is Horizon and American Saga. New how, how do I TV like him? Show. How do I like that guy? Who is it? Kevin Costner? No, the other guy. What was the uh, other guy, Manny, that I uh, saw I in did, there? I don't know who you saw. <gasps> he is... Yes. Bob, Sex in the City. Samantha's... Burger? No, Samantha's. That oh, was Carrie. The, the guy who... The, Aiden. The proper Aiden. Rela- she moved. Sh- Mr. Big. She moved to California for him. Yes, the young guy. Oh, the actor. Yeah, um, I can't think of his name. He was an actor in Sex in the City. Mm. Um, um, that's him, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I didn't see him <laughs> for long enough. But it looks, it looks like... Um, it's going to be very Yellowstone esque, mm. but obviously back back in the day, the the older style ones. But Jamie Campbell, oh my no? god, um, Horizon and American Sam Saga. Sam Worthington's in it. Mm-hmm. It looks fantastic. I no. bet you though, the thing with it will be because it's Kevin Costner. It'll go for four and a half days. <laughs> yeah, he does. It's love a, a two. It's a two part western. Mm. Why is it got all the same people from Yellowstone? Yeah. Uh, because the uh, director's a genius and is like, all the Yellowstone people will come and watch this. Okay. Um, I know maybe Like Kevin, Danny Houston. <clears throat> maybe Costner. Kevin Costner might have skin in the game on it because he's... He, or his. Yeah, because he started actually producing mm. a lot of this type of stuff now. Um, yeah, it's quite quite smart. Is he still doing Yellowstone or has he walked no, away from it? he walked away. Why? Uh, the differences with uh, Taylor. The director? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. and then he went through a divorce at the same time. All got real messy. That was so he's saying, messy. Saying I was right. He's saying he's planning to make four feature films in his Horizon saga with a total run time of roughly eleven hours. Wow, he does like a long one. Sam Worthington looks like he's a main character in it. Wow. Well, that'll ruin it for everybody. <gasps> He's a great actor. No, he isn't. He Did, is a good actor. No, he they, isn't. Back in those days in America, they didn't have blue skinned people. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Like name, 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 name a good movie. Sienna he's been Miller. In. I loved. I loved um, Avatar. Yeah. Name any others. Clash of the Titans. That was terrible. Good one. Fractured. Fractured. I, to be honest with you, I'm just on Avatar's I'm the online, only mate. movie that I know he's been in. Mm. I don't. I don't know about any. He was others. in a terrible Terminator movie as well. Yeah. Terminator so Salvation. Don't rate him. Don't rate him. People do rate him. Oh, Sienna Miller. I loved her growing up. I just thought, like, she's just the the picture of oh. beauty, I always think. It's got Vecna from um, Stranger Things in it. Oh, yeah. What well. is it on Netflix? Giovanni Rabisi. No, I think it'll be at the movies. It's Warner Brothers. And I did get so. the wrong guy. He wasn't in oh. Sex and the City, by the way. I stuffed up in that one. B yeah. looks very similar to uh, Jamie Campbell. So they're movie oh. movies, right? I thought, yeah. they, I thought they were on a streaming. Like they a could streaming be. Service. I mean, movie movies are these days too, but I, as far true. as I know. It's, so Jamie it's a... Campbell Boa is the guy that's on Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Yeah, okay. he plays the demon dude. <gasps> Spoiler. <laughs> Hmm. Um, but that's going to be good. I, the trailer or the something popped up for it in my feed yesterday. I was like, "Ooh, I you'd love to be American, wouldn't you?" And a cowboy, um, a cowboy. Not to not to be American, but I, I'd love. You love the I'd love to go and live out on a ranch and experience that. Mm. I, I don't know how to ride a horse or something. Like city slickers, do you remember? But that we should go and learn to ride a horse. Do you want to? You just got to get the the jolty up the jolt down going. Um, I always find it scary. Yeah, I'm very high up on a horse. No, you're not getting the jolt right. Don't, you don't yeah, know how fast be, my horse is. You'd be is higher going. than usual. But well, I would, if it's galloping, like you'd be like that. Uh, 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 <laughs> take, if, if I had the opportunity to go and live out on one, I, I, would, I would take it up. If here, I, though, or over there? Uh, anywhere. Anywhere. Even here. I mean, if I really wanted to, I guess I could. But so you'd retire with like a hobby farm, have a few yeah, animals that would be and cool. stuff? Yeah. Mm. I mean, the idea of it's nice. I imagine you get all that work and you go, she. Mm, I was speaking but, to uh, a little girl the other day and she was talking about her horses. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. She's like, we haven't seen them for a while. I was like, oh, well, you should go out. Make the effort to go and see them. And I turned around they and I was like. They were dead, weren't they? <laughs> oh, but she didn't, hadn't told her yet? Mm-mm. Glue factory? Ooh. No, I think they just sold them because when you, you, you move. They're and they, expensive. They're really mm, expensive. Yeah. And she said um, that they bought one horse and they got two. <laughs> oh, wow. The horse was pregnant. Oh, all right. So yeah. then they got and two. And that would have cost a crap. Of course, because yeah. then they had to pay even more. And then yeah. at that point they realised it was probably just easier to pay to go and visit a horse. horse. Yeah. Anyway, but she's still got the photos, but they just haven't been able to see it. So I was like, oh, you should go this weekend. Mm-hmm. Fun. 
Uh, righto, let us begin the podcast. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Yesterday, my heart was just racing and my legs were jelly. You know, when you're driving and you've got police behind you yeah. and you start to freak out like you have just robbed a bank. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I just go, what have I done? Yeah. Oh, my God. And I got pulled over yesterday and I still feel sick about it because I was leaving the gym mm. and I called my mum. Now, can I just say, I called my mum on the car phone before I started driving. My phone was in my bag on the um, floor mm-hmm. of the passenger side, stating all that. Mm-hmm. And I was driving along... What are you doing? Why are you smoking? Just, I have. I didn't. I didn't. Face, I hadn't done anything wrong, and this is what I say. So I was. I was driving down Stanley Street. You know, when you. Yep. It's a one-way mm-hmm. street, so it's got a few different lanes. Yep. Uh, Coming up to the petrol like station on the corner. East Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I was driving down that street, and I just heard these sirens. Whoop whoop. Like really, really loud sirens, and I didn't know where they were coming from. And I'm not very good at determining whether it's an ambulance or a police. I don't know. Fire engine, they all sound the same. But I was like, I don't know where they're coming from. And I was talking to my mum. I said, Mum, there's there's sirens. I think there's police. I don't know where I'm supposed to go because, of course, you freak out and you want to pull over for them. Mm. Yeah. And there was this full drive that was crossing over the lanes behind me, and I clocked that that was the siren. Mm. And I was like, it was undercover. Oh, oh, oh the SWAT oh. too. That's the SWAT in those. Um, there was no on the thing, drives. but you know, you can see the color flashing, mm. and, and I could hear the siren. And it, they're in the, on the dash area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I look in my rear view, view mirror, and like I was like, okay, cool. Well, I've got to slow down, you know. And then I realized mm. they slewed, and um, they went behind me, and mm. I was like, oh my god, it's me. Mm. And I started to slow down, and they started to slow down. I was like, all right, where do I pull over? You know, I just get frazzled by it, and I just turn into yeah. as if I'm like I'm in an old plate and not knowing Kids, what I'm doing. Kids, throw the drugs out, quick, <laughs> yeah. out the back. But I'm, mum's like, what's happening? I'm like, I'm being pulled over. I don't know what I've done, and I start just, Sweating. Uh, mm. I don't know what's going on. So I indicate, and they indicate, indicate, and I pull over, and they pull over right behind me. And I wind down my window and three cops get out of the car yeah. and run. What? And I'm like, oh, my God. Guns out? Not guns out, but just run. And I went out my window and I said, I am so sorry. I don't know what I've done. Like, just in this stupid voice. <laughs> and they ran past my window and go, it's okay, ma'am. We've just got a call. I was like, oh. And then they ran into the house. And I'm, like, sitting there just going, oh, my God. Oh, so it was just all bad timing. It was just bad timing. They must have thought this idiot is slowing down and blocking us from going to the house. And I'm like driving and I indicate. And I put my window down and I scream, I don't know what I've done. Mm -hmm. And they just run past and go, it's all right, ma'am, nothing. We just got a house call. (laughs) So you, and you just happened to pull out exactly in front of the house that they were chasing down. Yeah. Yeah. I just sat there just going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Did you hang around to find out what was going down in the house? No, five kilos in the back. (laughs) (laughs) But it's under like the co- the cars that they drive. Mm. It was a like a, a normal four wheel drive. drive. It was a four wheel drive. Mm. Like what a Land Cruiser. I don't know, but they're all running. Yeah. And you know, and I was like, oh, they must have thought, what is this idiot doing in front of us, pulling over? And that point, I realised, I'm like, they knew what they were doing. I think they just found it funny. <laughs> Uh, on you their think, way to a major incident, they'll yeah. oh, just screw with Abby yeah, from B105 yeah. for a bit. Lighten but don't you the, always the just think, well, how do they know I am? You know, you just always think, I've done something wrong. Oh, I could not have drunk alcohol in six weeks yep. and be blowing into a breathalyzer thinking, this is it, this I'm is, done. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. They're going to do me. Was there something was in my mouthwash. Was it mouthwash? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. use mouthwash, but it could have been mouthwash. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine how you would I feel. I had to sit there for a couple of minutes just going, oh my God. And I can't believe I wind down the window and yelled at them. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I've done. Do you think it's different if you do know you've done something? You don't sweat it because you're like, ah, oh, I've done, I know what I've done here. Like you run a red light, you whoop, whoop. You're like, well, I tell you, what, I looked you in, know, it was maybe. three guys like running mm. and I was like, this is it now. I, really I know I wanted to stay in jail, yeah, or, you know, for a little bit, day. but now I don't know if I'm dressed for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they give you clothes and then you go in. in your I haven't, I haven't waxed. Yeah. And there's so many things I've got to get done before they send me. I don't know what I've done, but please give me an hour. <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. This is a story that I'm hoping has a fairy tale ending because there's a guy called Daniel and he's from uh, Sydney's North and he was on holidays over in the United States where he met the love of his life, so he thought. Mm. 
And then he returned to Australia. I mean, he doesn't have a green card. It's a green card, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, well, I want to come with you to Australia. So they set up home in Australia and he's a guy that's always wanted kids. His whole life he's wanted kids. They fall pregnant. He's overjoyed, but she's like, I'm homesick. I need to go back to America to see my family and friends. He's like, of course. And then he got a phone call from her saying, actually, I'm with my ex. I'm not going to come back. This was him talking about it on A Current Affair. Where were you the moment she told you that she wasn't coming back to Australia? I was actually leaving the job site as she's telling me the news and, yeah, got back with her ex-partner. And I was just, I just I couldn't believe it. And I'm just like, what is happening? Like, you're pregnant with my daughter. She was starting to send me um, adoption options for people that she knew in uh, Texas. And I was like, no, this is... Stop. Don't promise her to anyone. This is, it feels so wrong. This is, I will do whatever it takes so I can be the father. Adoption laws in Australia are incredibly... Difficult. Well, different than America because mm. it is so difficult. But that's what I thought would be freaky because in America it is easier to go through the adoption process. Mm. So I think he was just so scared about it. And he's set up a fundraiser to go over and get her. And he's over in the States now. She's been born. I mean, that's um, frightening that essentially she's run away with his child, Yeah, you know, and in that instance, um, he's lucky that she let him know where she was and what was going on because I, she very well could have just so gone, right. never just heard from her again, and, yeah. and that's his child, mm. never to be seen. And once, I guess, the adoption process goes through, if he didn't, if she didn't list him as the father, pair, or, yeah. 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 It's also a bit of a different one because generally it's the dad that takes the children when they what do you mean? when they scarper off overseas somewhere. Oh, and in the stories in the yeah, yeah. the big news stories yeah. that have made it and yeah. she's trying to get them back. Yeah. yeah. So he's over there at the moment. He's over there at the moment. It's baby Anya. Mm-hmm. I don't know who named her. Um, and he's in the process of trying to bring her home. So I don't know if he's got to get a little Australian passport for yeah. it. Yeah. It's not little, it's the same size. Do you but... reckon he'd realise on a long-haul flight with a newborn baby that he's made a terrible mistake? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I know, I know. No, I don't. But, I mean, there's a lot to be involved with that. I wonder if she stayed in hospital with the baby um, mm. and how he's going, going with it. feeding. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of babies that can't breastfeed, so I don't think that's yeah. going to be an issue, but it's just... I don't know, I guess, what his relationship is with the mum now. Mm. And the ex taking her back while she's pregnant with another fella's yeah. baby. And she's, like, were they chatting online when she was still here in Australia? Well, that's, and that's one why question she I want to know. Does Yeah, does is that why she did? Or is it, it, it just it, like, oh, wow, you look amazing. Thank you, I'm uh, pregnant. Oh, cool. Mm. You're you glowing. Because you, you'd have to well, think. some people have it as a thing, Matt. You'd have, to, you'd have to think that she knew what she was doing when she left. I don't think that she got over there and went, oh, no, I'm going to stay. I think she knew she was going to stay. Really? You reckon she, she was I running away? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to chat to Dan next uh, from He's the in States. Texas. Mm. He's in Texas. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll find out these questions. Because the other thing is, too, what if the mother changes her mind once he gets back and says, I want the baby back? Mm. Like, I wonder if they've got some sort of contractual agreement. Or, or maybe she signed over the, the rights. Yeah, that's mm. what I mean. Like, yeah. is, has he got full, full custody? Because mm-hmm. imagine if this poor fella comes back and he's got this beautiful baby girl who's three or something and she goes, mm. I want my daughter now. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, we're going to chat to Dan uh, live from Texas. We'll do it next here at B105. Dan has always wanted to be a dad, and that dream was finally coming true. Then his girlfriend left him and gave a heartbreaking ultimatum. He's about to make a mercy dash to the US to get his baby before it's too late. Yeah, a lot of people have donated, and you can if you want. It's called Bring Baby on Your Home, and it's a fundraiser for a guy from Sydney to mm-hmm. go over to America, Texas, to bring his daughter home. His American girlfriend uh, returned uh, back to the States when she was pregnant and decided that she wanted to stay there. She got back with her ex-partner and wanted to put the baby up for adoption. Dan was like, no, that's my baby. I want to go to the States and be able to get her and bring her home. So we're going to Texas right now where Dan is with uh, baby Anna in arms, we understand. Hey, hey Dan. Guys. Hey. Hey, how are you? Can I ask just firstly, what was the moment yeah. like when you saw your baby girl? Oh, it was incredible, really. Like I, you know, I was a little bit awkward, a little bit um, unsure how I'd feel coming back here. Or, and as soon as I saw her, just 
all of that just dissolved. Yeah. It was just magic. I didn't feel any other emotion except love for her. Can I take it back? How? Because you were holidaying in San Francisco when you met the the mother yeah. of her. Yeah. How long were you guys together for in Australia before she decided to return to the states? Um, probably six weeks uh, okay. back in Australia, and then um, which she was pregnant at the time. So a lot of emotions were coming up for her, um, feeling kind of unsettled and just wanted to go back to her place because um, she's got a house in Austin. Mm-hmm. And that was still going fine. Like it did, it was a bit hard for me to swallow at first. I was, you know, feeling quite abandoned and all the rest. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, as soon as, yeah, it was kind of like a month and we were making it work. You know, I just, I respected her wishes. And the plan was that we were going to go for a little trip to New Zealand. Um, but then, you know, she bumped into her ex and things changed. Mm-hmm. So Dan... Did you think when she left and said, I'm not coming back, she has your baby, Mm. did did you engage lawyers at that point? Because, I mean, one of of my fears, if I was in your shoes, would be she would terminate the pregnancy. Yeah, we didn't. I mean, I didn't. I I have a... My friend in San Fran, who I was actually catching up with when I was over there, he's a lawyer. So Hmm. he also took me to Burning Man like many years ago. But he he's been on my side and helping me get like um, all the legal advice and anything that I need. Um, And I was I was confident she wasn't going to terminate the pregnancy. Um, It was just yeah, it was just figuring out life after that, Mm. uh, being outside the world. You're in an Airbnb. Is a mother of her there now too? Yeah, yeah, she's okay. she's in the other room with Anna now. Um, mm-hmm. This is this is she lives ten minutes away from here, and her mum hired this Airbnb, so I'm staying with her mum. So okay. your relationship now is like it it obviously you're not together, but it is civil. Amicable. It's very civil, yeah. Um, That's she, nice. She's yeah. Since she's had the baby, she says she feels different. Like she loves the baby, but she's not sure. Yeah, it's, it's just she she feels that the baby will have a better life with me in Australia and. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how the ex plays into that. Oh, so, I don't really want to ask. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I guess with the, the the midwife apparently needs to go over and sign the, the birth certificate. How does it yeah. work for you yeah. to be able to bring the baby back to Australia? Does she need to sign well, over her rights or how is that going to work? Uh, yeah, so the first step is having my name on the birth certificate. That's the big one. Um, and then I've had a lovely gentleman reach out to me through my well, – he saw the he saw the current affairs show and then – he followed my posts and um, messaged me and he's like, because I thought I had to go to Houston to get um, Australian passport first, mm. but it actually doesn't kind of work like that. I've got to get citizenship first. So he's helping me as we speak, actually, once the birth certif- certificate's done and we get passport photos, he can submit that. So hopefully today or tomorrow. And um, I might have to go for the American passport at the same time and whichever comes back first, mm. uh, fly on that. So is he a guy that has a lot of power or a lot of money or both? Um, he had the same situation as me six oh, years ago when wow. his ex actually passed away and he had to bring his two little girls back to Australia. So he's been through all this right. and he's actually in the field. So he's like an Australian registered um not migration uh, agent. So he's like, I got you. I don't need anything. Like it's all pro bono. I just, people helped me out when he went through it. So he wants to do the same for someone else. So will, will the mum be on the birth certificate too? Is that what she's? Yeah. yeah. We'll both be on the birth certificate. Um, and, and then it's just up to um, time really once everything's submitted and we okay. just have to wait it out till it, till it gets back and then I can safely fly. So I guess that's the whole thing is you wanted to be able to raise money so that you can go over there and stay over there yeah. for as long as you have to to get this sorted. That's right. Yeah, before the fundraiser, um, I was I could only afford to come over here just to just for the birth and just to sign the, the birth certificate and then fly back and, oh, and do the paperwork and then fly back and then wait for it to, to be um, finalised. You said that the her mum hired the Airbnb. How is her mum mm-hmm. with having her granddaughter move to Australia? Um, it's hard for her. Like she, this is her first granddaughter. Mm. Uh, her first, you know, this, grandchild. This yeah. First chance to be, yeah, to be a grandma. So it's hard for her, and she wants to be in the baby's life. She's super lovely. Uh, we get on well, um, and I, all I can promise is, is photos and updates. And if she ever wants to visit, then for sure. Is the mother still with her ex? Are they still together in a relationship? 
I believe so. I had, it's you don't want to ask, ask yet. Yeah. Yeah. God, I got so many questions. I'm really <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, it's complicated. Do Do you think uh, that when she left, she knew that she wasn't going to come back, or do you think she legitimately had a change of heart when she got there? I I think she was coming back, and then it was being in her hormonal pregnant stage, seeing her ex, like just everything lit up again. And mm. but that that something just said it was all right for her. Like it was, she was acting how she felt aligned to and i'm just like okay well that's they're your choices um i'm i'm not in, in this anymore but um, i'm here for anna do you have an agreement uh legally with her that once you get back to australia um if she changes her mind and wants anna back you know i can't it'd be a horrible situation for you mate if Sorry, you've got your yeah. six month old daughter and she goes nah we're going to court i want her back in america yeah, and let, I, I really hope it doesn't come to that. But we are, um, we are gonna. Her attorney um, is gonna start the paperwork for soul, uh, not soul parent. No, yeah, soul parental rights. Right. Um, right. Okay. But not, not, not to sign her, um, sign her rights away as a mother. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That's why we're talking, she's still on the certificate yeah. and all that. Yeah. You're a, yeah. 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 You're very lucky that you've got like people that do this in your life. Like if someone oh. went over there that didn't have these friends of yours, they could, it would be a lot more of a bother, wouldn't it? Totally. Totally. And, and that's, um, that's exactly what, um, this gentleman said to me, he goes like, you're, you're super lucky that, um, things are working in your favor because mm. if it was like up to a legal battle, like it could get very ugly very soon. Mm. Mm. Well, Dan, um, we're stoked you, uh, getting your daughter buddy. And I, and I think it's quite commendable too, yeah. that you're, you know, you're not, say anything bad about your ex and, and the mum of your child. It's just she's decided that's not where she wants her life to go and you're yeah, accepting that yeah. and, and you're taking responsibility, man. So good on you yes. and, I, and I hope you and your daughter have an amazing, amazing life back here in Australia. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, all the love and support that I've had, I, I honestly wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't have the strength to get through this mm. without that. So I'm so grateful. Good on you, buddy. Nice to chat. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Australia's biggest social experiment is back. Married at first sight. Married at first sight. Well, it is the show that just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and douchier and douchier. Oh, just admit to everyone that you've been watching it this year. I have been watching this season because I have a friend on there. So sure. to see how she goes. Drea, the older uh, couple. Whoa, is I'm that sure what you say to her? That's what they are being, that, that's what they're called on the show. He, he's, can, he's he the, identifies uh, as an older person. Oh, so, so he's allowed, allowed to, yeah, so course, I believe sorry. her partner is the oldest contestant they've ever had in the experiment. Yes, but he's, he's the most... Frisky, if yes. you ask him. Yes, he is. Are they, are I love they that I haven't been watching it this year, and you're four all times a day. across it. Four times a day. That's what he said at the dinner party or at the meeting place. Yes. Ooh. Mm. There you go. Mm. Well, they got time. They're on the show. Yeah, they have got nothing else to do. Mm. They, all you do is drink, eat, fight. Yeah, what? what I, <laughs> you can't make I don't that know, movement what? on radio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, a couple of the contestants have revealed a hidden talent, uh, very creative talents, uh, the two of them, and one that you would not expect because Jack, a couple of um, episodes ago, now Jack is the douche canoe um, who told the other guy to muzzle his woman. Um, we had him in here uh, the other day. And uh, he surprised his. This is beautiful. And this will, you might, do you have, get a box of tissues, Abs, because you might tear up. Um, because oh, he okay. took the opportunity after a, a dinner party that got a little bit out of control. He wanted to get his relationship back on track. With Tori. Yeah, so he wrote a poem to her. He wrote a poem to her. Oh, cringe. No, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's the w- words of a bard. You know, he's a real wordsmith. Okay. Um, have a listen to Jack's wonderfully elegant poem. Things I love about Tori. I love the way you make our bed. I love the way you put a grin on my head. Brilliant. I love it when you cuddle me at night. I love it when you put up a fight, don't like last night. I don't know what that means. I love the way you make me feel. This is a crazy experiment, but our connection is real. Genius. <laughs> Most importantly, I love the way we are striving for our happy ever after. And of course, how we share that ridiculous laughter. Don't ever change, my baby. I'm already so very proud of you. Did you really write this? I did, babe. Why didn't I the did last babe. one rhyme? Don't ever change, babe. Mate, I'm very proud of you. you've written some songs that didn't rhyme, okay? No, I've taken creative license and rhymed you with you. Now, <laughs> oh, no. I think it was me Can with I? me. It was, yeah. <laughs> that, that was beautiful. Wasn't it? 
just uh, you could tell it was from the bottom See, of the I shouldn't bun. judge we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, judge men uh, for putting their feelings out see, there. See, I actually either. find poems and songs and all that. Mm. I honestly do think it is really quite romantic. Mm. If you love the person. Mm. And that's what I think is really harsh because I feel like a lot of times you will get poems or songs from people that you don't love and that's when it's awkward as. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, it's they could say anything if you love them. Of course. Like, the words don't yeah. matter because you're into them, but yeah. they could write the most beautiful poem and if they disgust you, you're, <laughs> you're like, oh my God, what do I do? What reaction do I do? Where do I look? Oh, that's great. The dry just... reaching is probably not a good idea. <laughs> no, but you feel like you got to bop your bop head along. to the song. Like, oh, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want non core? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and another one, it happened again uh, last night when Ben and Ellie, uh, Ben was trying to, he uh, disappeared on his wife and uh, he was uh, pulled up on it and they had a bit of a brouhaha again at the dinner parties and he uh, decided to patch things up um, by doing something quite unique. Now, he wrote her a song uh, and he uh, went through, he, he showed her and he went through the lyrics and how he realised that um, his behaviour was incorrect and that it, as he was doing it, well, he'll explain it. It just became a song. So all these were just thoughts on what you said on the couch. bit that really stood out, like I was unaware of my... I think of even that song said, one of my behaviours, but now I do know. I, I know it's just thoughts. And then I just... Hang on. Those thoughts is now a verse. Those thoughts are now a chorus. And then he just looked down and went, bugger me, I've written a song. Did he sing it? Well, he did. <laughs> Weirdly. Do you want to put it into a song? He, no, he didn't sing it to her, but he did sing it. He said afterwards, he said, look, if I sang it again, it, would, it wouldn't be the same song. It would be different because it's all, um, my mind's racing. What does he do for work? Uh, he, I can tell you that Boiler he's maker. definitely not a songwriter <laughs> because <laughs> this is the song that he wrote. I'm sorry, everybody, and I will never play this again. I've been unaware of my f***ed up behaviors Until you pointed them out on the couch And I just want to say thanks No, that's not that bad. I think it's just out of context. You He's a tour guide? No. Oh, He's my God. Guide. Does he get out the guitar and sing to people? Yeah, I bet he would. Intro it is like imagine that on Triple J. Yeah, yeah number one on Triple J is hardest one hundred. It's so edgy. It's, we had to swear. Yeah, it's very edgy singing a different key to the guitar. Ooh, <laughs> jealous. <laughs> but that's actually a million dollar song. So listen out for it. <laughs> <laughs> the B one hundred and five Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Dear Abby, sometimes in life <laughs> gets real, and that's when you need Abby to help. I'm trying to help you. You've got a bit of a dilemma. Send an email, dear Abby mm. at b105.com.au. I've got a few recently asking about the Millionaire Lounge. So you just got to listen for the song and call for that, okay? Because that's how this one. dilemma is they don't have a million dollars. Well, this is how this one started <laughs> saying, dear Abby, how do I get the million dollars? Ha 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 ha. Why the ha ha ha? But anyway, <laughs> she then said, I would really like to know does anyone have advice for renting out a room? Mm. My husband passed away eight years ago and I'm forever thankful that he had things in place for us to pay off our house for our sons and I and it allowed me to work part-time and grieve. It was so amazing and I'm forever thankful. But now one of my sons has moved out with his delightful girlfriend. Delightful. Delightful. Yeah. Who, can I just say, is very, very sensible. They are renting out their spare room and she suggested I do it too and I could get up to 200 a week for the very large bedroom as it backs onto its own entrance and has an ensuite and even a car park available at the entrance. But I just don't know. My other son, who's living at home, said he's okay with it. And to be fair, he's never home. But I just don't know. Do I get a real estate to take care of it or do I I just rent it myself as it's just a room? What happens if things go pear-shaped? How do I get them out? Do I just call the police? (laughs) I mean, I know all the positives of more money to cover bills and I could drop a day of work or I could start to travel. Mm -hmm. But do I ask for another man to be living here? Because I've never had a man living here since eight years. I've never even seen a man naked since. I don't know what that's good. don't know if they're getting naked. But How's he paying the rent? <laughs> I would just like to know, how do I go about it? Has anyone had a terrible story of renting out their spare room? Mm. Oh, yeah, of course they would. 131060. 
Our neighbours do it. Yeah. And I, it, I have a naked man in no, their no, spare no, room. No, I don't know where the naked man. I think she's just thinking she's just about. She hasn't had sex since her husband passed away. Yeah, but yeah. I think just having another man. Is living... she going to take that as payment? <laughs> no, she's not. Please take it seriously for her, okay? I don't know why she mentioned that. This bloke moved in. And now I still have a spare room, so... I man, think what she's saying is, wouldn't it be a bit scary to have another man in the house? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if she did see him naked, like, oh, yeah. which I can understand. I did say to her, though, if she does want to travel more, it's nice having someone at home. Yeah. yeah. You know, if yeah. this other son is not there. And, and 200 a week is huge. God, yeah. So I can understand she might not have to work or she, she can travel. But, yeah, our neighbours do it. And I don't even... I don't even know that she's there. Right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I hear my <coughs> neighbours and they hear us, but, but you like don't I hear her. no. Mm. I think so, it's and fine that, as if long as you got, got downstairs. That, yeah. yeah, and that's sort of what they said there: your own entry and exit. You're still sharing a kitchen. Yeah. Like though you don't need to share the bathroom in the middle of the night, and you've got to remember if someone's renting it out, they could have someone over as well. Mm-hmm. We used to do it when we were younger all the time. It wasn't even a question. You know, you, of course. you'd want to move out, and a complete stranger who was a friend of a friend of a friend would would move in. But with then, you how do you go about that. it when you own the house? Mm. Yeah, because you're all on the lease when you move in as flatmates. And it's easier mm. because if you don't pay, the real estate kicks you out. What mm. happens if this person, it goes pear-shaped? What do you do? Mm. As she said. Because you couldn't go through a real estate, could you? I don't think so. Not for a room. Because you, I don't know. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, you'd also want to go cash, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because the thing to take into account is how do you set it up? Because... Do they pay bills as well, or do you just go, it's 200, two, that's it. 200 I don't everything. think we're advising her to do tax fraud, Matt. No, well, that wouldn't be tax fraud. Because you just said go cash. It, yeah, because it would be consuming all of the, um, well, it's not an income, is it? It is an yeah, income. it's an income. You've got money coming in. Oh, hip. How many borders have you got? The ATO, listen. All I'm saying is, mm. if the door's locked, don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> what does that huh? You mind your business. <laughs> that's it. That's hundred percent income that you've got to claim. Well, I never uh, thought about that, but yeah, but that's how that's how yeah, tricky yeah, it gets. Nah. <laughs> well, okay. So when you start charging your kids board, hmm. do you have to claim that back to the ATO? I don't know. No, well, God, haven't we a... just opened Pandora's box here? I think that would be classified as family business. I it's still oh, You don't need to pay tax <laughs> on family business. Is that true? Good. <laughs> Good to know. Going on, Sorry, you guys. this is a family business. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a family owned yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're related. That's why I'm not paying any. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want that to get into this. I mean, look, if you know any of the, the laws on that, like maybe she should be concerned about having to pay. If you've got to pay mm. more. That's my son. He's 20 years older than you. Shut up. The <laughs> families are different. All right? Don't you judge me. You know, you'd get away with that. Of course you would. Yeah. I would like to hear from people that have done it. How did it How did it work out? Was yeah. it a good thing? Did you or get would you just be like, nah, work that extra day. Yeah. Don't worry about the extra income. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, and I know this is, I shouldn't go too far. Maybe romances have re-blossomed for people. Oh, I reckon. Can you is. request who you want, though? I mean, you can bet them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, this day and age, she might not want another man in there because mm. it might be too hard. I obviously she hasn't been with anyone since mm. her mm. husband passed away. Mm. Sounded like me. She did really want a man in there, mm. but that's her family business. And what about your mum's question. place? Would she ever rent out? Um, no, no. Nah. She, my she'd mom, prefer to keep working. Yeah, yeah. well, she she wouldn't want to live with anyone. Mm. You know, that's a as she says, she can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can. Just use the old Of course you can. That's what I say to her. You need better treats. I'm like, it appears Dad liked your tricks. Your tricks work quite well. (laughs) Someone else will give it a go. All right, Vicky and Kalanga, you've done this? Yes, I have. Um, I am a homeowner. Mm -hmm. I am living with two wonderful people, um, and I rent my room out for $400 a week. That's including... All bills, everything included, mm-hmm. and um, amazing situation, people. But the only downside is when they sleep naked and do nudie runs in between the hallway and their bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I guess everyone does. But yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, it's it's really really good. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, financially helps me out a heap, mm-hmm. um, and. Um, I recommend it a hundred percent. What about cooking? Um, you just got to cook in between 
different times, mm. but they work different times to me. Like, mm-hmm. he doesn't get home till 10 o'clock at night, so I get to sort of cook in the normal time. So it just depends. It's like if they do their washing on the weekend. I did my washing today. So yeah, right. we just, you've just got to compromise just on work. different things. Yeah. Mm. And you yeah, just did it all yourself? So. You didn't go through a real estate agent? No, because I own, mm. um, I just put an ad up on Marketplace mm. and um, it went like that. But I do know that if you are renting, um, you have to be approved by the real estate. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, if you're buying so, a place. And as yeah. Maddie was asking a question, that's income? Do you have to declare it? Yes, you do, do. have to declare it. Um, it is taxable and at the end of the financial year, it is classed as income, correct? Okay. All right. God, what a kill joy. <laughs> well, everything's yeah. like everything's that. taxed. Everything's taxed. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Isn't there is. still a death so, tax as well? Yeah, probably. Mm. Mm. Everything's taxed. They tax you even after you die. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's blessed, blessed to be a blessing. Hey, Kylie. Uh, yeah. You've done this. It didn't end as well for you, though. Oh, no. It was a nightmare the first time I did it. Mm. No. What happened? It was, um, I lived in Victoria a long time ago, but um, it was over a decade, and I'd recently separated from my partner. I had three very young kids, Um, like one was an infant, um, and a friend of mine, her brother, needed a a place to stay, so I rented out a room to him. And initially it was okay, and he did his own cooking, and he did all his own thing, and he was quite lovely. Mm -hmm. But then when it came time that I I was relocating to Queensland, I gave him a month's notice that he would need to start getting ready to leave. Um, And I gave him a date he had to be out by, and then he refused to pay rent that last time he was there, and then he would just refuse to leave. Right. I had to end up getting the police to come, and we had to put, they said, put all his stuff on the nature strip, mm-hmm. and we'll be here if he turns up. Right. And, wow. Yeah. And just change the locks. It was really bizarre. Was yeah. Really bizarre. Right. But my friend was, like, blown away by his behaviour. Yeah. So, Interesting, so, yeah. Well, I guess that's what you, you do have to remember that too. Once people are in there, they could be hard to get out. Yeah, true, true. Uh, anonymous, um, you've been doing this? I've, I've actually been uh, subletting for 15 years. I've never really experienced the nudie run though. But, okay. um, <laughs> what a shame, <laughs> hey, Anonymous. Yeah, you oh, would oh. mind a little. What's your advice for her then? <laughs> <laughs> Our biggest bit of advice is is do yourself up a form of rental agreement there. So you, what day you expect expect rent to be paid. If you're holding a security deposit from them, that that security deposit will be given back so long as nothing's been damaged or mm-hmm. um, anything like that in the house and that you're expected two weeks' notice and you'll be given two weeks' notice um, if, if something isn't working out correctly for you. And that gives you grounds to go back to the police and actually go, well, look, we do have this bit of an agreement here. Mm. Um, I've given them the notice through text message, and you show, like you put everything in writing, of course, but you, know, you, you can... I've had a terrible experience with a very serious crime on a couple of occasions with mm. people that I've let in, um, but in saying it, I've also built some absolutely beautiful friendships with people as well over the years okay. through doing it. Mm-hmm. I think um, if you've done it for 15 years, um, I imagine the advice you'd give this lady is... Um, you have to be flexible in the way that you live because it's even though it's your house, other people have to feel like they they own the home. You're sort going of back too. to your flatting it, days. It, yeah, yeah. A, a person's entitled, I guess, to feel as as though that it is partially their their home as well. And if you don't make it their home, you're going to jump through um, people all the time and yeah. go through the yeah. experience. But um, take your time. Definitely uh, trust your gut. Your gut um, is a very good indicator. Mm-hmm. And another really good little tip as well, if you can just get a sneaky look at a person's car as a condition, you'll get an idea as to how clean they're going to be within the house. Genius, Anonymous. Oh, no. Well, I shouldn't let my... <laughs> no, don't look at my car. I think women are a different thing. If you look <laughs> no. at my car and Abby's car, you would never let them live in your yeah, house. Yeah, look, it's a wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. A brand new single, Hearts on the Run, is out now. I haven't spoken in a while. Ages. Great to chat to her. Yes. Delta Goodrum, good morning. Hello, team. Good morning. It's nice to hear your voice. Oh, it's nice to hear your voice. Where are you in the world? Are you, are you back in Australia or in the UK? 
I'm in London at the moment. It's uh, uh, late at night, and um, I'm I'm enjoying the, my night coffee. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually just saw a video of you, and I wanted to ask you a question because I can't ask my friend because she got really annoyed at me because you right. produce the most beautiful music, and you have been uh, with an orchestra, and you were taking over from the conductor. And my friend is a music teacher, and she always has to do the conducting. And I'm like, can they do it without you? As a conductor, like, can, like, what does Are it they con- necessary? Come <laughs> to the chase. <laughs> and what was the answer? What was the response? She hung up on me, so that's why I'm asking oh. you. <laughs> no, you know, I, I worked with this, um, you get assigned a, an amazing sort of maestro, and mine happened to be an Australian gentleman called Sean, who's phenomenal. Mm. And and it, it, it really is an energy. It's a connected room, but the orchestra's there. Um, we've worked hard on the arrangements prior, and I, I mean, I, I just loved the, the the playfulness of us sort of starting off without you. With a, we had this orchestra, BBC, BBC orchestra, so we may as well get classical about mm. it. I did really hurt your shoulders. You get into it, and you're like, oh, it's a bit of it's a bit of a gym workout. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> conducting. <laughs> you really get into it. Well, both um, Kate Blanchett for her movie Tar and um, Bradley Cooper for his oh, yeah. movie Maestro, okay. they both learned to do it and mm. conducted audiences, and they said it was life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, wasn't, it wasn't amazing. <laughs> Me, as if I've done that. Um, <laughs> Didn't change yeah. deltas. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just I another day. Yeah. I really, I really immersed in a, um, what is that, method acting. Mm-hmm. When, I, when, I did this, when I did this 30 seconds, I method acted for a yes. week. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> well, funny you say about the shoulder. My friend actually needed to have a full shoulder recon after doing did the conducting. She? Yeah. Oh, wow. for, and it was like work cover oh. because she was doing it for kids and they were like maybe pull back so there you go i'm telling you now i can i i understand i understand i can see the window of what would happen there <laughs> my hope was all right <laughs> um now you had a netflix film um lovers in the air which was shot entirely uh at the Whit sundays in queensland um abby yeah. has organized a uh, a work trip that's happening at daydream Ooh. island mm-hmm. did you too plan your whole movie around somewhere <laughs> which was just going to be pretty much holiday <laughs> look it was definitely appealing going to early beach for for like a month so i was definitely excited about the escapism of, of getting to be able to be on set in a beautiful location um but it was it was really fun filming that and and I mean, I love those movies anyway, rom-coms, but yeah. we had a wonderful crew in Queensland getting to getting to film together with, with incredible, incredible team over there with Steve Jaggy and really, really love stepping back into into film and, and having it on Netflix. It was, a real, it was really awesome. Great fun. Does that mean you've got uh, more acting coming up? We do. It's a lot of, a lot of projects in the pipeline. Excited to, to come to life really soon. And yeah. Oh, very coy. I know. Very I like cool. that. You did just. She's like, <laughs> ask me in a couple more weeks when we've actually got the release date. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in a couple weeks. <laughs> but enough. you did just post a video on your Instagram of you singing the neighbours theme song. Could you be popping into Ramsey Street? Because a lot of people are doing that with the return. Look, um, that's more a part of the new album, actually. That the tracks that I thought would really resonate as a, <laughs> as a sort of a single. I thought, but, uh, no, it's funny because we, you know, when I first when I first started, obviously with Neighbours, and it's it's nice when people ask to hear it over here in the UK quite a lot. It's, mm-hmm. it's a good bit of fun. <laughs> uh, how were the Grammys <laughs> after parties? Yeah, oh my gosh, it, it really was so fun. I um, it was a great week. It's like we had the G'day USA, which was means there's a lot of Aussies coming in for the. USA night that we had a great time. Grammys was amazing. Where, although the music cares night that, that I got to go to and see Bon jo- uh, John Bon Jovi be honoured, and off the table it was like you had um, Paul McCartney wow. and Bruce Springsteen and John Bon Jovi sitting there, and I was like, I mean, <laughs> these these talents, <laughs> this is this is insane. They they all performed together and tonight. It was really awesome to see all those. Those musos come together. That was the stuff that I really enjoyed. I love it when you turn into fangirl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're Delta Goodrum, but you're like, like, ah! It's Paul McCartney and Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. <laughs> I may never be in a room with them again. They could drop dead in any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Did... It was really, um, and, and Shania Twain, that was really awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, so lovely to speak to you. Hearts on the run. Um, it is out now. It's your brand new single, um, and we are playing it here at B105. So uh, the video is just dropped. So Get on and check that out. Great to talk to you this morning, Delta. Thanks, Steve. So great to talk to you too. 
You I enjoyed. Enjoy. Where's the girl trip, Abby? When is that? Uh, it's happening next week if you want to come back to Australia for it. <laughs> oh, oh, that would be fun. I love a girl's trip. That'd be great. Yeah, come on. Flies back early. Private jet. You jet. can do it. Do a Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get my private jet in London. Yes, yeah. I'll save you and a friend a ticket, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know I'm going to announce it that Delta Goodrum's coming, I mean, and then the whole yeah. time people are going to go, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good one. Yeah, cool. Bye. Bye. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Yesterday, they announced the Broncos team that are going to be playing over in Vegas, mm-hmm. the squad. Were you happy with it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was what we expected. Cor- Wasn't Corey, Corey Oates. Oates? Well, he, look, he... I'm trying to impress him. Nah. Stuff. Just go with it. Um, and, you know, to his credit, he took yeah. a massive pay cut to stay with the Broncos this year. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of new blood coming through. And, um, you know, C- Corey is at the back end of his career, so... He, he's not, you know, it's expected mm. he wouldn't be playing his position. And Reese Walsh, I mean, we haven't seen anything compared to what he's capable, have we? So We haven't yet. Yeah, you so know, that's going to be really exciting. Beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm here. I don't know, just try and impress him. But that's not what I did notice. What I did notice and what I got so excited about is having the Australian players go over to the States and having America just get like, what? And I do love it because there's things like they gave them these big jerseys of NFL and they're massive. And mm. I was like, why are they so big? And I was like, that's right, because they have all the protection. Yeah. 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 And padding in there. So they must Which just is, think, what are the Australians doing? Where are your they helmets? Think, no, they think crazy, yeah. 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 But he, um, one of the guys, Manly, from Manly, Jason Saab, he appeared on a US television promoting um, the game. Mm. And he was asked by the host about the mascots. And I guess, really, you've never really questioned it. No. And the difference is, you know, Australian rugby league players... Very relaxed compared to when you get the American footballers who, you know, they're in there, they're media trained, they know what to do. Uh, yeah. Our fellows are just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're um, in Vegas. The bo- full credit yeah. to the boys. Yeah, they really turned up. Today. So, this is, the, this is the question that they asked about the mascots. South Sydney, yeah, so South, South Sydney, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. a rabbit. That's the rabbit a real, is, yeah. is that a real creature? Or is that it's a... a rabbit, but it's they're all rabbits. So they're all rabbitos. So I guess that's that's the name. Yeah. So yeah. every team has their own totem, right? We got the sea eagle. They got the rabbits. Eagle. You know, Broncos have the the Broncos. Um, <laughs> roosters have the roosters. So. Broncos have the, Broncos. the Broncos have the Broncos. Should you not explain <laughs> that it's a type of horse? Like you, if you're yeah. explaining something, you can't just say the word again. Well, the Americans like, know what a bronco is, yeah. right? Okay, fine. They should know that, yeah. but they you should the... still sort of maybe use a different word to. Describe it. Yeah, the Broncos you? have the horse. Oh, the horse, yeah. yes, yeah. The, the, the eagles have the, the sea yeah. eagles, which is a bird. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> but I instead, will... you've just repeated the word. They are all rabbits. <laughs> it's the rabbits. I'll run to his defence here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because yeah. I, I thought mm. the yeah. same as him mm. that the rabbitos mm. was just an Australianised word for a rabbit. You're right. But that's not that's not what a rabbito is. No. 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 What is a rabbito? A rabbito is a uh, man back in the day, like in the pioneering Bushman days, who would go around and skin rabbits for people in front of them and give them the rabbit. But hmm. I would like it if now the commentators just go, yeah, and they're rabbits, and they're all the rabbits, ra- rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> the Stormos, <laughs> the St. Georgios, yeah. the Dolphos. You know, that's I, I think he was just thinking, that's an Aussie thing, we just put O on the Well, I think everything. he's there to talk about the football, and all of a sudden they're asking yeah. about the mascots, and even he started to question as why well. Why are like, we called the rabbits? Why are yeah. they called? Yeah. That's yeah. really weird. Mm, I mean, yeah. the Sea Eagles, I get it, that's mm. me, but what are, what are the rabbits? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, my theory of how I, I bet on games... On which animal? Well, what would, would win? win out of a rabbito mm. and a bronco? Bronco, step on it. Well, not if the you're person. going off the person who's yeah. got a gun who shoots the rabbit. Oh, that's you true. Know what I mean? That yeah, changes so everything. If you've yeah. just lost what about your money the sea there. Eagle? Yeah. Well, I was still thinking of it as a rabbit because a sea eagle would swoop down and take the rabbit like they do with chihuahuas no, and but stuff. But it's a man. As Maddie said, yeah. you just added a gun to the Yeah, you yeah. just shoot the. Well, they, America will love them now. Yeah, but also, too, the rabbit was so busy looking for the rabbit to shoot that the eagle can swoop down from behind it and swing around and peck him in the eyeball. It's not an exact science. No. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Alpha box tomorrow, your chance at $10,000. Your letter is C for cash, and some of your answers are cheese, camera and cold play. Right up, see you tomorrow. Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show.